In this video, we'll discuss neural control of respiration, voluntary and involuntary control of respiration, the respiratory centers, inspiratory and expiratory centers, and their connections, and chemoreceptors, and a chemical reaction. So the neural control of breathing is done by a voluntary control and an involuntary control. So what's a voluntary control of breathing? Involuntary control of breathing offer and from neocortex to inspiratory neuron, from cerebral cortex to the corticospinal tract. When voluntarily breathing a person can hyperventilate hypoventilate or it can stop breathing for some time where does the afferent comes to respiratory center in pain and emotional stimuli in pain and emotional stimuli afferent from limbic system and hypothalamus stimulate respiration what's on dying curse involuntary autonomic breathing is the main stay of respiration and without involuntary autonomic breathing life is difficult. In ondine curse there is a loss of involuntary autonomic breathing control and breathing occurs through voluntary control only. Conditions causing ondine curse are disorders that compress the medulla cause ondine curse like condition. Number one lateral medullary infarction in distal vertebral artery occlusion. Number two central apnea during sleep progresses to fetal respiratory failure and this need mechanical ventilation. Number three, ondine curse is also caused by Hadid syndrome. So what's Hadid syndrome? In Hadid syndrome, there is congenital central hypoventilation, Hirschsprung disease and neuroblastoma. And this Hadid syndrome is due to genetic mutation. Number four, congenital hypoventilation syndrome. In this hypoventilation syndrome, person breathes adequately when he's awake but not when asleep. The respiratory center is not stimulated by hypercapnia, hypoxia and acidosis. Next, bilateral anterolateral cervical chordotomy for pain cuts autonomic respiration pathway leaving voluntary respiration intact. And last, stroke and obesity can also lead to ondine cuts. The involuntary control of breathing. Number one, expiratory and inspiratory centers and number two, chemoreceptor. These are the two important part of involuntary control of breathing. The expiratory and inspiratory centers are in the pons and medulla and they are connected to ventral and lateral spinal cord. The chemoreceptors are of two types central and peripheral chemoreceptor. So where are the expiratory and inspiratory center? The expiratory center is in the upper pons known as pneumotoxic center. It inhibits the respiration and the inspiratory centers are in the pons and medulla. The apneostic center is in the lower pons below the pneumotoxic center and this one stimulates the respiration and causes deep prolonged inspiratory gas. The inspiratory center in the medulla is in the reticular formation. And what does it cause? It causes rhythmic discharges and produces autonomic respiration. Two groups of inspiratory neurons in the medulla, the dorsal group and the ventral group. Dorsal group produces inspiratory rhythmic discharges. It has an input and an output. Where the input comes from and where the output goes from these dorsal group of neurons in the medulla. The inputs are from cranial nerve 9, glossopharyngeal nerve, and the 10th cranial nerve, the vagus nerve. The cranial nerve 9 brings the impulses from peripheral chemoreceptors, and vagus nerve brings afferent from chemoreceptors and from stretch receptors and mechanoreceptors from lung. When the lungs are inflated in inspiration, it brings impulses to inhibit the inspiration and the output from the inspiratory neuron are to the contralateral phrenic nerve and the ventral group consists of cranial and a caudal nuclei. Cranial division innervates the ipsilateral accessory muscles via vagus nerve and a caudal division to the intercostal muscles. These neurons are also connected to both inspiratory and expiratory neurons. And what are the effector organs? The effector organs of the respiratory systems are diaphragm frame, abdominal muscles and accessory muscles of respiration. So muscles of respirations are the effector organ. Now chemoreceptors. Chemoreceptors are two 
central and peripheral. So where are the central chemoreceptors? The central chemoreceptors are in the medulla near the inspiratory center and they are stimulated by a decrease in pH, increase in hydrogen ion concentration and an increase in carbon dioxide. So hydrogen does not cross blood brain barriers. So how it acts on the respiratory center? Since carbon dioxide is lipid soluble, it enters the CSF from the arterial blood and it there it combines with water to produce use hydrogen and bicarbonate. This is the reaction. Carbon dioxide plus water gives carbonic acid that breaks into hydrogen and bicarbonate. The hydrogen ion thus form acts directly on the central chemoreceptor and stimulates breathing. Thus an increase in carbon dioxide causes hyperventilation. The peripheral chemoreceptors. So where are the peripheral chemoreceptors? The two types of peripheral chemoreceptors aortic and carotid. The aortic chemoreceptors are above and below the aortic arch and Carotid body chemoreceptors are at the bifurcation of the common carotid artery. The peripheral chemoreceptors are stimulated by a decrease in pH, increase in hydrogen ion concentration and increase in carbon dioxide. So increased hydrogen increases the breathing and decreased hydrogen ion concentration decreases the breathing. When does oxygen stimulate chemoreceptor? Oxygen stimulates chemoreceptor when PO2 becomes less than 60 millimeters of mercury.